Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us on In uh, Overtime. My name is Nick Suter, and with me is Vox. Uh, those of you who've been around for a while may remember that when uh, the president was diagnosed with COVID, we reached the conclusion that it was probably actually far worse than uh, we had been told. We had a number of uh, uh, reasons why we believed this. First of all, he had been taken uh, by Marine One instead of by a car that could have gotten there uh, very quickly. Also, the staff was extraordinarily worried, and uh, a number of people who had seen him described him as having very low blood pressure and being uh, confused and having uh, what would be associated with uh, pretty significant COVID. The, one of his doctors ended up also inadvertently releasing that the COVID, his COVID status was actually worse and was at, it was at least a moderate case of COVID. So uh, what we're learning today is that it turns out his condition was in fact a good deal worse than uh, people had uh, been told. We know that um, uh, he in fact was actually, they were considering putting him on a ventilator. One of the reasons they chose not to was that they knew that that would get out. But on the flip side, it was uh, certainly considered. We also remember that his pulse ox, uh, they had said, well, gee, what was his uh, pulse ox? And nobody would actually give the number. But what they did say was, well, it never got into the low 80s. Okay, well, that means it's in the mid 80s. That's what that means. Um, so, uh, which is really uh, extraordinarily serious. And at that point, probably it should have been uh, 25th Amendment. But uh, nonetheless, we can, we can revisit that at some point if we uh, choose to get into that, but we are now learning that in fact, uh, his condition was far more serious than they had let on. Representative Ron Wright of Texas died on Sunday. He had cancer and it was assumed that that was the cause of his death. However, 
It, we have learned now that he did, in fact, die of COVID. He had been hospitalized for COVID. His cancer was, uh, he, he did have it, but it was, uh, he hadn't been hospitalized for it. And it was, um, at least, I, I don't know how terminal he was, but that was not the uh, reason for his hospitalization. It was, in fact, COVID, and that was the cause of death, meaning that he is the first member of Congress to uh, die, first sitting member of Congress to die from the disease. Lou Dobbs was fired from Fox News a day after um, uh, Smartmatic filed a $2.7 billion, billion dollar defamation suit against Dobbs, Fox News, and two other Fox News hosts for their claims that the uh, Smartmatic machines had uh, erroneously basically handed the uh, election to Joe Biden. Meanwhile, in New York, the, uh, a New York court has upheld that Manafort cannot be prosecuted for felonies at the state level, including but not limited to mortgage fraud and money laundering. This is because he actually was already tried and convicted at the federal level for these crimes. And um, since he was, in fact, already tried, uh, despite the fact that he was pardoned, the pardon does not take away the conviction. It does not take away uh, the fact that you were tried. Ergo, double jeopardy means Manafort cannot be tried by the state for state crimes. I think we'll have to have that discussion with Vox. Um, but that's an interesting one. Um, meanwhile, the uh, impeachment trial of Donald Trump continues. And after his entire legal team quit, his replacement team has uh, been doing, I, I suppose, what we might have expected, but for the fact that we'd have thought they'd be far more professional than this. Um, the prosecution, the, the uh, uh, managers of the impeachment, uh, made an extraordinarily strong opening case. And even those who have signaled that they will probably, under any and all sets of circumstances, vote not to impeach, which would also include um, um, Mitch McConnell, who purportedly actually called Trump and said, um, I, I'm telling you, we will not convict. Um, nonetheless, the consensus has been that uh, this is now a ball game. Uh, I think we spoke uh, a about this about a week ago and said that it was or a little more than that and said that it really looked like there wasn't going to be sufficient votes to convict. But at this point, the attorneys almost seem to be wanting him to get convicted. They have been um, uh, making uh, veiled threats to senators, suggesting that any senator who, uh, especially I think it was the Nebraska senator, who if he uh, votes to convict should also remember that there are laws in Nebraska and that an in industrious lawyer might be able to come get him in Nebraska. This was put into the fucking congressional record by uh, these attorneys. Uh, that, oh. They also... Um, uh, pointed out that uh, one of their key arguments was that um, Trump, of the 10,000 words that Trump spoke on January 6th, only a handful used were the word fight. Only a handful of those words were the word fight. The rest, they noted, were not the word fight. So please keep in mind, that while he did use the word fight, out of the 10,000 words he spoke, most of them were not the word fight, so please do not convict him. Um, a number of congressional staffers at uh, Senator Tom Hawley's and Ted Cruz's offices have said that they will resign if those senators do not vote to convict Trump. They have argued that this is where they work. And this was a siege at their offices. They work there, too. And it may be that this mob was after uh, senators, but this is their staff. And they feel like they've been neglected, left out to dry, hung out to dry, um, and have, are joining now a call of nearly 400 staffers at the Capitol who have said that um, they are now demanding the Senate vote to convict uh, Trump in the impeachment. We have also learned today that Tom Cotton was so concerned, Senator Tom Cotton was so concerned over the situation on January 6th that while he was hiding in a um, undisclosed location in a shelter in the Capitol building, that he asked one of his staffers to go back to his office, grab his sidearm, 
and bring it back to him so that he could be prepared to defend uh, himself and the others at the, that location, which he said he was prepared to do if anyone attempted to breach um, that location. Um, we've also learned that, uh, now there's been a number of accusations and some credible evidence that a number of members of Congress knew ahead of time that A, there would be protests, and B, that some of those protesters would probably try to break into the building and uh, ostensibly hold a sit-in uh, in order to protest the certification of the votes for Biden. At a minimum, it appears that there's a number of senators who may have known that ahead of time. How much they knew beyond that, we don't know. But uh, Senator Sheldon Whitehouse of Rhode Island has suggested now that he believes that one of the reasons that people continued to object and delay the counting of the ballots was, in fact, explicitly to give the protesters more time to breach the, uh, the Capitol building and make their way to the Senate floor. This would be a stunning revelation. Again, it's very hard to, to say what they knew or believed was going to happen at the time, but uh, any sort of complicity, complicity in this is obviously uh, uh, shocking. Um, meanwhile, uh, we have also learned that uh, the officer, uh, we, uh, while we were watching the, um, uh, the presentation from the um, impeachment managers, we have seen new footage of what happened on January 6th, and there was a great deal more violence and chaos there than we had previously seen. We also know that the officer who had uh, directed the mob away from the senators and from, uh, we now know, Mitt Romney, the vice president, and several others, uh, had actually one of the, he had done a number of things. One of the things I, it seems that he had done was... Um, as they came and he realized that there was uh, a, a, a number of government officials on one side uh, and empty offices on the other, he started to protect the empty offices. And he said, you can't come here, go away, you're not welcome here, um, don't, don't come here. And um, naturally, the protesters figured, ah, whatever's in those offices is what we want, and they proceeded to uh, overwhelm him and get past him going to the empty offices that he had defended, um, which is an interesting, here is a man who was armed with a sidearm and uh, managed to beat them with his brains instead of his gun. He also, uh, footage of him uh, bumping into Senator Romney and telling him to run in the other direction, uh, just moments ahead of the uh, mob, which he was trying to get ahead of so he could try to direct. Romney had um, uh, not seen that footage before. He did know that there had been some uh, heroics on behalf of um, that, on, uh, by that um, officer, but uh, had not known the full extent of what he had done. And in fact, uh, none of us were, were all still learning that, but what we have here is Mitt Romney's response after seeing video footage of what that Capitol Hill officer did, and what we're going to do here is, um, oh, let me just, uh, yeah, we're going to play that for you now, and I, what I, what I'd like you to note, it's very rare that you see a anybody in politics really showing emotion of any kind. And what I think you're going to see here is, uh, or what you can hear in his voice, uh, is uh, obviously the sound of somebody who is um, uh, really quite shaken uh, by what he learned. So let's listen. This is uh, Senator Romney after learning of uh, exactly what that officer had done. It's troubling to, uh, to see the, uh, the great violence that, that uh, our Capitol Police and others were subjected to. It, uh, it tears at your, at your heart and, and brings tears to your eyes. It was uh, uh, overwhelmingly uh, distressing and, and emotional. Did you know that was that, that, that was Officer Goodman? I'm sorry, what was that? Did you know you were that close to those folks when you came down this hall? No, no, I did not. Did you know that was Officer Goodman? 
Pardon? I'm sorry? Did you know that was Officer Goodman? Who no, I did not know that was Officer Goodman. I look forward to thanking him when I next see him. Had you, you seen, seen that video before? That video? Yes, it was, yeah. What did you and, and, feel like watching that? Uh, that I was very fortunate indeed that Officer Goodman was there to, to get me in the uh, right direction. Do you think this will change the minds of some of your fellow Republicans? I, I can't predict what other, how other people will react. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Ken. Um, and then uh, shortly, um, uh, well, uh, around that time, uh, Mitt Romney indicated that he was going to, in fact, uh, vote to convict uh, based on his um, uh, convictions as a, uh, as a religious person and his oath to defend the Constitution, and that it was, in fact, quite clear that Donald Trump was guilty. We're going to play a, a small segment of that. Uh, where his voice starts to break up, and again, he, he, he really has uh, some difficulty composing himself. Let's listen. Wrong. With regards to Hunter Biden, taking excessive advantage of his father's name is unsavory, but also not a crime. Given that in neither the case of the father nor the son was any evidence presented by the president's counsel that a crime had been committed, the president's insistence that they be investigated by the Ukrainians is hard to explain other than as a political pursuit. There's no question in my mind that were their names not Biden, the president would never have done what he did. The defense argues that the Senate should leave the impeachment decision to the voters. While that logic is appealing to our democratic instincts, it is inconsistent with the Constitution's requirement that the Senate not the voters, try the president. Hamilton explained that the founders' decision to invest senators with this obligation rather than leave it to the voters was intended to minimize, to the extent possible, the partisan sentiments of the public at large. So the verdict is ours to render under our Constitution. The people will judge us for how well and faithfully we fulfill our duty. The grave question the Constitution tasks senators to answer is whether the president committed an act so extreme and egregious that it rises to the level of a high crime and misdemeanor. Yes, he did. The president asked a foreign government to investigate his political rival. The president withheld vital military funds from that government to press it to do so. The president delayed funds for an American ally at war with Russian invaders. The All right, I'll uh, leave that there. He, he, he breaks up a bit more when he talks about his, his faith and uh, why he feels compelled to vote to convict. But uh, Mitt Romney is now one of a number of uh, Republicans, which includes uh, dozens of former um, officials from the Reagan, George W. Bush, and George H. W. Bush administrations, as well as Trump's own administration, who are now talking about creating a new centrist Republican Party, and that rather than having the the far extremists of their group just bail and create their own party, to actually bail on the Republicans themselves, cede the party to the extremists, and create their own centrist Republican Party. They are now in talks to. Um, uh, they're now in talks to uh, do that, and uh, we will see where that goes. Meanwhile, just moments ago, we've learned that Daniel Beck, who was one of the uh, ostensibly one of the organizers of the January 6th riot, met on January 5th with uh, top Trump advisors, allies, attorneys, associates, as well as members of the Trump family at the Trump International Hotel in what he called a war council. Um, we don't know yet a, a whole heck of a lot about what was discussed, except there, there was some planning for what was at the time still called a protest. But this would be a further indication that Trump, his family, and the people in the administration knew that something was planned uh, very much for that day. And uh, once again, we'll have to sort of sort out um, who knew uh, what at what time. And so I think that just about uh, wraps it up for us. So Vox, what are your thoughts on uh, a rather large amount of information? Um, if I went backwards, you know, um, 
I, uh, I, I've been paying attention to kind of the reactions. Um, and I, I do notice my camera is a bit blurry. I do apologize. I think that's on my end um, and nobody else's. So I do apologize for that. Um, but I, I think um, I've been paying attention to the, and, and what I've noticed is a common thread is that um, there seems to be, I don't know if it'll last a fracturing amongst the Republicans as we thought might occur where, you know, kind of the, the last vestiges of the Reagan type Republicans Romney being one of them, Lisa Murkowski being one of them, and and the supporters that they have acting in a certain way, and everybody else acting another way. Um, uh, you know, there's no doubt in my mind that uh, Donald Trump hoped that uh, whatever um, had this delusion that he was going to remain in office. There's no doubt about it in my mind. Um, and there's no doubt in my mind that uh, many of these protesters felt that they were responding to uh, a, a call to uh, fight from the president of the United States, and they answered that call. Um, and there's also no doubt in my mind that the majority of the Republicans in office will ignore this and ignore their duty to the Constitution of the United States and mm. to the people that voted for them and to our traditions and way of life and give Donald Trump a pass. And um, it kind of affirms a belief in me that I've often had, I've often wondered about, but was never sure about is, you know, have this romantic idea of what the constitution is and what our institutions are and whether or not they can stand the test of time and really um, they've never really been put to the test and they you know they were put to the test uh, in the last year and a half and they've failed our institutions failed to remove a corrupt tyrant from office the process failed because um, as is of course case it relied on fallible men um, and the convictions of politicians today are not the convictions of yesteryear's politicians um, you know politicians were willing politicians are willing to go to war um, over their convictions before now it's all about um, metrics and polling data and things like that and so the process of impeachment has become a joke um, the idea that, um, you know, Donald Trump would ever be convicted for anything is ludicrous because our system has failed us. And so it just tells me that it's time to look into, uh, you know, uh, amending our systems to ensure things like this do not happen again. We have to figure out how to strengthen um, these things, whether or not impeachment pro proceedings in the future need to be done by external um, jurors as opposed to um, senators. Mm. Um, you know, maybe a sampling of federal judges as jurors as opposed to um, uh, any kind of a Senate person where, you know, they have to be elected because, you know, they do have to be elected. Um, as to, you know, um, uh, the police officer that uh, protected Mitt Romney and so many other people, um, yeah, that man's a hero. And... Um, you know, um, one of the sad things um, is that he is being attacked right, by the uh, very people that will shout at you, blue lives matter, blue lives matter, blue lives matter. Yet here's a blue life and they will attack him and call him out for not allowing these people to go kill Mitt Romney and execute the vice president and, you know, um, hunt down Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Um, I see there's a super chat. You want to do that real quick? Yeah, and I uh, um, want to say, yeah, yeah, Titan uh, wasn't able to make it. That's partly my fault. I didn't notify him in time. I was, I was, I got distracted and the, none of the notifications came up. But uh, also, uh, 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 Nate is here. So, Nate, thank you so much for, for joining us. Xandering, uh, uh, 
the usual crowd. So thank you all for for joining us. Uh, Jake, ten dollars. Uh, Jake, four D, ten dollars. A strong centrist Republican Party would guarantee a landslide victory for Democrats in most elections for years to come. It would also likely lead to a much better government overall. I encourage it. Um, I, I think that's sort of the same argument we also made about uh, just a, a far left party. If a far left broke off from the Republicans or the center breaks off from Republicans, it's the same. It's the same net result, I think, for um, for the next uh, 10 to 20 years of elections. But um, so uh, anyways, you were you were uh, saying I about. Expect, uh... Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it just, it just strikes me as uh, and, and, you know, um it is the body politic it is expected of the body politic but at the same time um, I had hoped that some of these people would be willing to stick to their convictions and of course I expect a couple of these senators to vote to convict um, but you know, it's just further proof that um, a document, uh, even such as the Constitution, built on you know checks and balances, opposed to trust or anything like that, um, constantly has to be revised um, as new things occur. And um, so, um, I think that what I would like to see is a push for Puerto Rican and DC statehood to ensure for more democratic senators um such that we can possibly maybe be able to push through some kind of uh reform that um can ensure that something like this doesn't happen again such as maybe having you know federal appellate court justices sit in 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 trial as opposed to senators um because they're lifetime appointees they are not beholden to uh, anybody um, and then, of course, you know, going back to the police officer with the Blue Lives Matter chance and everything like that, you know, it's it, it's sad that, you know, the, the, the group being of people that are all about blue lives, uh, here's an exemplification of what they've been saying for years, it's not all blue lives, here's a shining example of a person who is willing to put their body online to defend somebody else, and he's being ostracized and trashed by the radical right, by the alt-right, by the libertarians, um, you know, by the QAnon people. Um, and this is what the Republican Party has become. The Republican Party is no longer the grand old party. The Republican Party is a hodgepodge of various um, conspiracy networks and adult-minded people um, and people who just don't have the time otherwise to determine, you know, whether or not they should go one way or the other. And, um, you know, so we're, we're, we're witnessing, you know, uh, a, a strange time. Um, I, I was talking to my wife the other day and I said, so I feel like I've been living in a dream. Uh, um, no, this is something that, um, you know, it's almost like you never expect to live history. You know, you read about history, you don't <laughs> live history. Yeah. This is living yeah. history. But it's not living good history, you know. We're not living that that positive history. This we're not living that romantic American spirit, that that that, that uh, ideal of overcoming, you know, hardship and and struggle in order to achieve greater things and to provide, you know, and and that's not the history that we're living through right now. Um, and you know, I, it makes me sad. Um, then I guess winding all the way back to the front, it does not rom it, it does not in any way um, surprise me whatsoever that. Um, uh, senior members of the Trump administration lied about the health of Donald Trump um, because that is what yeah. tyrants do. They lie. They don't tell the truth. Um, and they don't. And, and what they show by doing that is, is that they show that they not they don't have faith in the American people. Right. They show that they don't trust us because what they should do is recognize that the American people um, can withstand almost anything. We are a hardy group, 
from various walks of life and we can overcome if you are open and honest with us and being a strong leader means being open and honest and telling us when you're having a tough go of it so you know should we have been told donald trump struggling yes we should have and it could have provided an opportunity for us to rally around this tyrant at least for a moment in recognition that the office is bigger than the man but he didn't give us that opportunity he lied to us and he 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 took away that opportunity for unity um and it doesn't surprise me um and that's my take on all of it. So uh, you you had uh, made a, a couple of suggestions about what might make things better. Um, I, this is a would would a strong third party maybe serve all of those purposes? And if so, what is the actual likelihood that we would get a third party in this country? <laughs> Third parties, uh, there is no likelihood that we will have a um, third party for any length of time. Third parties are generally uh, transitory to new second parties. Um, so think of um, the Democratic Republican Party or the Bull Moose Party or the Whig Party, right? These were transitory parties to New Party. Of course, Democratic Republicans have become uh, the grand old party. Fact check me on that. I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure that's what became the Republicans was the Democratic Republicans. And I'm sure that the audience will be happy to fact check me on that. <laughs> um, and uh, so uh, I, I could certainly see uh, with Donald Trump's bravado and need for ador adoration, adulation, and attention um, to attempt to form this um, Patriot Party. And he certainly got a tight enough grip that he could certainly swing it. And what I would expect to happen is, is there would be a coalition, or I'm sorry, yeah, or, uh, I think I said that right, a coalition around Trump and, and maybe or Howley. Coalesce, yeah. um, uh, coalesce, yeah, that's what we wanted to say. Uh, around Trump and and Halley and uh, Louis Goma, um, you know, the, the, the brightest of, you know, <laughs> the party. And what I would expect is the maybe, um, you know, two-eighths of the Republican Party that's actually still, you know, what we would consider to be Reagan Republicans would just, I think... You know, deal with the fact that they're just going to have to become Democrats. Um, although we do see an expansion of the independents, right? Registered unaffiliated, but that's not a party, right? Um, yeah. And so I, I don't really know, like that, that's why we have, well, that's why we've been having trouble with polling is because, partially because of that. But, um, so that's what I would expect, and I think, I, I mean, I, I do expect that, um, I, don't, I don't expect the Republican Party to come out of this. Um, but of course, having said they won't come out of this, this could be a 30-year thing. I mean, it's not like tomorrow the Republican Party is going to be over, but I do think that we'll see a drastic change. Um, and this is really why, this is, this is the time to, I think, um, uh, push for D.C. Uh, and Puerto Rican statehood, because... Uh, confirming a state requires uh, only a simple majority. And since the confirmation of a new state is certainly budgetary related, this could be something that could be pushed seemingly through reconciliation. Hmm. Um, and then we would not have to deal with whether or not Republicans think it's okay. And at this point, I am willing to abuse reconciliation. Um, and be called a tyrant myself. Um, uh, and the reason I'm a, I'm willing to deal with you know being called that by the opposition party is because the type of tyrants that I am and the, you know the people like mine and people like me are tyrants for totality, right? And what I mean by that is we're trying to expand the number of people who are included in yes. our ideology as opposed to trying to limit it so if if we're going to be called the tyrant well we're the tyrant for the many and not a tyrant for the few well and i'm not sure it's, um, it's necessarily abuse of reconciliation anyway i mean it, it, as long as it's budget neutral and adding another state is not only budget neutral but ostensibly would get more revenue but at any rate i apologize please please uh continue 
Yeah, no. Um, I I think that, that that's that's where I would you know be about it. I really like the idea of uh, I've been kicking this around in my head. But I really like the idea of just like you know the may, maybe the uh, the chief justice of each district appellate well, or, or each appellate court plus the the head of each district coming together and they are they become the uh uh the jurors for impeachment mm, trials moving mm. forward um so of course you know like one of those would be merrick garland right so merrick, merrick garland is chief chief Dust, justice dc court of appeals right yep. so he would be one of the ones presiding just to give an idea of what what i would be talking about and then we could go about it the same way where we have you know um the house um present the articles the senate the senate could vote as to whether or not impeachment should take place and then the the judicial and then of course what that does as well is it involves a co- another co-equal branch of government in the process so i think it adds a further check and maybe that's what the pro- what's missing here in impeachment is is that impeachment was um done and and I think the the House managers have done a brilliant job of showing what impeachment was about. We really got a history lesson in where impeachment comes from, what it is, how it's meant to be, right? Um, but uh, I think providing that extra check from another co-equal branch of government would really, you know, solidify that maybe uh, this could be used to actually prevent these things from occurring. Because obviously, you know, the twenty fifth should have been used on many occasions, as Jesus, and it yeah. wasn't. So it. Yeah, if we can't count on cabinet members and the vice president to do what's needed to do, if we can't count on the Senate to do what's needed to do, then we need the judicial branch, which is supposed to be kind of that last ditch, like when all else fails, we have the courts kind of thing. All so, right. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's going to just about do it. I did want to say uh, one final thing before we go. Um, uh, so Sinister Porpoise uh, said here, uh, what we really need is, and I'd like to find it so I can quote her, let's see, um, da, 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 uh, something, something to the effect of well, what we really need is better consumers of journalism. Um, and I think there's a tremendous amount of truth to that. I think I'm, I am a firm believer that education is the silver bullet and that um, the better educated we are as a country and in, in education in across many respects, not just the ivory tower, but um, certainly educated in how, how do we consume uh, journalism is, is a huge element of that. And I think the, the better we are at that, the better it is for our country. And I will be honest, that's probably the single biggest reason I do this show. Uh, so I just, since that, since that hit a, a specific spot with, oh dear Lord, I'm trying to do a serious, emotional, I'm pouring my heart out and I have to compete with a cat. I have to compete <laughs> with a cat for attention on my own show. You know what? Okay. I'm, no, no. I'm going to, I'm going to close. I'm going to close. Vox. <laughs> you closed yourself. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right um so uh anyways that is that is uh one of the reasons i do think that learning things i think can be fun and i think we can try to enjoy it and, uh, and also but i think it's i think these kinds of discussions are what make uh for a, a better informed public and i think that is the silver bullet in one way or another but um thank you all for joining us uh, we are going to I uh, have Dr. Richard Carrier on a, a special Wednesday show to discuss uh, Bayesian analytics and uh, the, the Bayesian method for uh, determining uh, probability. And I think I'm, I'm looking forward to that because he's discussed that many times with us, or he's brought it up many times with us, but we never actually had him on to discuss it. So um, now Vox has already said that she, she's not a fan of Carrier and doesn't plan on being there. So... Um, <laughs> Um, yeah. Actually, what I said was I have had the opportunity for many years to, uh, you know, sit in on lectures with uh, Bart Ehrman. So it'll be nice to sit in on the other side of the contemporary historical debate. Um, 
Oh, that's what she says now. That's what she says now that we're live. Now that there are consequences. All right. So, um... <laughs> All right. Well, uh, so uh, we've got that coming up, and then uh, we've got a few more shows. We'll have the calendar up on the Discord. Anyone who wants to, to check in with us and figure out what's going on, please join us at the Discord. We'll also, uh, the Discord is uh, linked in the description. And uh, I don't th- thank you all for joining us. I think that that should just about cover it. Box, anything else that uh, I missed that you wanted to hit before we, we bail? No, I, I don't think so. I think. Um... Uh, that'll be it. I think they did a good job. Um, uh, I'll have come to the Discord for a little bit, and um, uh, maybe we do that uh, to you know, all the people that you know regularly can come and watch this. I uh, just want you to know that we do appreciate you. We notice you, and um, you know it's always I, I, I enjoy reading the live chats. Um, so I'm glad that you know so many of you continue to come and 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 you know check us out. So. We, we have a very good very audience. Much all, all of the audience and all of the hosts are Sinister Porpoise, is the best of my understanding. But nonetheless, we have a, we have a very good audience. And so uh, thank you all for joining us. And we will see you, uh, and, uh, barring any breaking news, <laughs> knock on, we will uh, see you all on Wednesday. Thank you for joining us. <laughs>